Veterans Day is a special day on this show, always has been a special day. We like to try to do more than just thank a veteran. We'd like to try to have some on. Let's hear from them. Let's talk to them. As you can probably tell, that's going to be a theme on today's show. And joining me now, somebody's personal friend of mine and has been for many years, Sean Parnell, Bronze Star, Purple Heart, you U.S. Army captain and author of the book Outlaw Platoon, if you want to hear exactly what he went through in Afghanistan for this country. Okay, Sean, first of all, tell us about the Army's 10th Mountain Division. That sounds kind of cool. Yeah, well, I... There are two seasons there. It's stationed up, stationed up at Fort Drum, New York. Two seasons there, July and winter. I found that out the hard way when I was a brand new, brand new second lieutenant coming out of Ranger School. Failed the first time through Ranger School. Uh, got probably one of my last choices in duty assignments because come to find out, again, uh, nobody really wanted to go to Fort Drum. But when I got there, I realized it was the best kept secret in the Army. And the 10th Mountain Division was... It was a light infantry division that was that had the moniker, at least back in the day, of being the most deployed unit in the Army. And back then, that's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> I don't know why I felt that way, but I was just, you know, after 9-11, I was just chomping at the bit uh, to get in the fight as fast as humanly possible to take the fight to the enemy. I mean, looking back, stupid, naive in so many ways, just a young kid. Uh, but we had units in the 10th Mountain Division that specialized in Iraq. And one brigade, uh, the Spartan Brigade, that specialized in Afghanistan, and I was in the Spartan Brigade. And our motto was "With your shield or on it." In other words, come home victorious or come home dead. <laughs> Again, I didn't really understand that back in the day, but uh, looking back, I, you know, I was very proud to be associated with that unit. Tell people, because I only did a little bit of this in the Marines. Too bad for you, Sean. Tell people what it's like to train in the mountains before we even get to afghanistan the mountains are just a completely different animal aren't they well yeah they are and the crazy thing about that is that leave it to the army to station somebody at fort drum where it's just flat as far as the eye can see but what it was in fort drum was freezing cold and so the 10th mountain division was really what really helped us was training in extreme cold weather climates. So when you're operating at 14,000 feet, and that's where we were in the valleys in Afghanistan at 14,000 feet, you can get pretty freaking cold up there. So being able to train in that type of environment and learn to operate in this, in, I mean, seriously, sub like 15, 16, 17 degrees below zero uh, in that type of weather Oof. in a combat environment, I mean, Jesse, I think it saved lives in combat. You train hard, you know, you train like you fight. And then when you get to combat, the hope is, is that it pays off dividends when you get there. And in my case, I think it did. Sean, it's hard to explain for those who haven't gone through it. And, and oftentimes women have a harder time understanding this who haven't gone through it. How much suffering together brings men together? It helps you come together as, as a unit. I, I've, I've told these stories before on the radio, on here, of various times where you suffer together and you end up just getting closer and closer through all that. Why? You know what I think it is, Jesse, is like when you go into basic training, you go in as an individual, you know, they're shaving everybody's head. They're, you know, you're only as fast as your slowest person. If somebody falls out in the run, the whole platoon stops, turns around, puts the guy to the front. You know, you, you, you become part of a team, something larger than yourself, and then you get to your unit and you shoot, move, and communicate together as a team. And that motto of being a part of something bigger than yourself, being part of something that's a collective, is really just beat into you. So you you almost, you change from just being an individual to a part of something bigger than just you. So you shoot, move, and communicate together as a team in training, and then you go to fight, bleed, and die together in combat. It really does forge this special bond with people that you have there. And Jesse, it really is unlike anything that I've ever experienced before. I was in combat for 16 months with these guys, heavy combat. I was in the light infantry too. Um, and we were outnumbered 10 to one in almost every single engagement that we were in. We were one infantry platoon in almost all of Burmel district in regional command east afghanistan this was before the surge right this was at the height of the hunt bin laden before the surge before we had tens of thousands of troops there and i could you know i'm the oldest of four siblings 
And in many ways, I'm closer with my troops than I am with my own sister and brothers. And it's not because I don't love my sisters and brothers, but it's just because I went through something very, very different with my men. Jesse, it was so crazy that it got to a point where I got to know those men so well, I could see them walking away from me under night vision in, in, in the middle of the night and know exactly who it was just by the way that they walked. Oh. I mean, that's, that's how close you get with those people. And you come to love them, man. And and like the crazy thing about it is, is like, you know, you do these platoon reunions or you talk to your, you know, you talk to people who are in your unit from time to time. And it's like, you know, it could be years, but it's like you you just hung out the day before because that bond is just so strong. It never goes away. Yeah, we just we just had a little 20 year Marine unit for a reunion for my unit. And we got together and it was exactly like that. It was like we, we rented a house in the lake and we automatically knew who was going to cook, who did the dishes. We did like we just we just I mean, we've we've been there. We've we've been through it with each other before. It's exactly like that. John, I, I want you to speak, if you don't mind, to veterans who may be struggling in watching this right now. It's harder over the holidays. It's harder with family. It's hard. And there are a lot of guys, even though we've been back for a long time, who are really, really still struggling with, with life and getting by. What do you have to say to them? Well, you know what, what it is? If, if, you, if we believe that the, the military trains you to shoot, move, communicate together, and then you fight, bleed, and die together in combat, and then you get out, and the military is like, all right, have a great life, salute, <laughs> like you're back out into the civilian world by yourself, and it runs contrary to everything that you've just been through, and I always think, Jesse, when someone asks me this question, I struggle with this a lot as well. And I've struggled a lot you know, throughout the years uh, with this. I'm no different. Um, but what so many men and women struggle with is the next mission coming home. And I remember having a conversation with my buddies from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, sitting around a table in a bar, and they asked me what Afghanistan was like. Of course, they asked me if I'd kill anybody before. Um, and I started telling them the stories of, of my time in combat. You know, uh, just they're my friends, people I went to elementary school with, high school with, in some cases, college. And very soon, Jesse, I realized I was sitting at the table by myself. And, you know, I'm nothing against my buddies. These are, these are depressing stories and combat stories can be a bit of a buzzkill for people who weren't there. But in that moment, I did with every single member who served in combat, doesn't matter what war you served in. I said to myself, you know what? These civilians will never get it. And I took that pain and I locked it away inside myself. And I promised to never talk about it again unless I spoke to somebody who understood or was there with me. And then I started writing Outlaw Platoon, which is my first book that you referenced. And what I realized when that book came out, I had soldiers and their family members reaching out to me and saying, oh my God, thank you for telling this story. You know, my son, my husband would have never told me this, but now that I know, you know, I can, I can help him. I can, I can, I know what he went through. So I'm better suited now to, to be that shoulder to, that he can lean on. And what I realized is, is that's why it's so critical for veterans to tell their story, you know, but like, it's really important, Jesse, to ask why I said, Hey, people don't get it. I'm never going to talk about this ever again. It's really important to ask why I did that. Well, you raise your right hand, you volunteer to serve, knowing that you go that you're going to war and you take an oath to protect people that you love and you care about your friends and your family and when soldiers or marines or anybody who served in the military realizes that their story just even listening to it hurts the people that they took an oath to protect most members of the military will just lock that away and say you know what i'll eat the pain myself because i'm going to protect the people that i love and care about but the problem is is that if you lock that stuff up inside of you, it can destroy somebody from the inside out. And it's really important living in a representative republic that the people who send politicians to Washington and then politicians then turn around and send our men and women to war, it's really important for the people who sent those politicians to Washington, who sent our men and women to war, to own that war when we come home and help us carry the burden. And that's what I realized in publishing my first book did is that everybody, every soldier, everybody that's ever served as part of these wars should be out there talking to civilians and people who never served about what it was like 
And the reason why that's so important, Jesse, and this is the last thing I'll say, is because it helps educate our society so we don't find ourselves in positions of forever wars like Iraq and Afghanistan for 20 plus years with almost nothing to show for it. We become a smarter society when our men and women come home and educate people about war and conflict. It's true. It is really true. They are the people who should be speaking the loudest. After all, they have the most (laughs) invested in this wonderful country. So, Sean, you are the man. As always, my brother, I will talk to you soon. I would thank you for coming to my YouTube channel, but I know how brilliant it is, and I know you love it here. So subscribe and watch. We're going to start really ramping things up and putting some funny stuff, some interesting stuff out there, some collaborations. Either way, my YouTube channel is officially the place to be. So stick around.